Hi guys, my name is Dr. Rola Rabah. I'm an oral maxillofacial surgery resident. I am currently in my third year of training and I'm finishing up a year of general surgery. I'm on the vascular surgery service right now. So I'm going to take you on a ride to show you the day in the life of vascular surgery. A lot of you guys might be confused to why I'm doing general surgery from an oral maxillofacial surgery resident. It's part of my training and I explain it in my other videos about oral maxillofacial surgery. So make sure you check out the other videos. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, let's go see what the day looks like. So the flow of the day is pretty much like all of the other general surgery services. You get to the hospital around 5.30 in the morning, you get signed up from the overnight intern who is handling your patients, and then you go and see the patients really quickly that are on your service, write any day notes, and then get to the day, whether it's going to the OR or doing some floor works. It could be different based on what the day looks like. Today I have some OR scheduled, and so I am going to see my patients in the morning and then go head to down to the OR to do some fun vascular surgery stuff. Just got signed out from the overnight intern. We took over the pager. We are going to gather the team and all of our supplies because there's a lot of dressing changes on vascular rounds. And then we'll go see all of our patients and we will disperse afterwards. Everybody's assigned something different. Today I'm going to the OR in the morning, so I'm super excited. I'll come back to the workroom, grab my stuff, and go to the OR. <laughs> finished patient rounds and every now and then I'll take a minute to stop by and enjoy the views from some of our hallways and patient rooms that are so so beautiful now I'm going to run and get ready for the OR we're doing an open case which is really exciting um, a lot of times on vascular surgery we get to do anastomosis for um, different vessels and that's actually really helpful because in oral maxillofacial surgery we do a lot of head and neck cancer and you get to do reconstruction and um, vessel anastomosis, so lots to learn, and I get to wear my loops. In the locker room, changing into stirrup gloves, and then getting to the OR for my kids. All done with the OR, I'm gonna head back to the workroom to see what's going on with our patients and check in with the team. So one of my favorite things about vascular surgery is I've actually gotten to go to the operating room quite a bit, which is incredible for learning and it makes the day go by like this. I got to the hospital at 5.30 in the morning. It's already lunchtime and time for me to introduce you to Factor. I'm absolutely obsessed with them, you guys. It makes healthy eating super simple. You know that my wedding is coming up, so I've been trying to eat healthy, but it's been extremely hard for me to make healthy meals, go grocery shopping with my crazy schedule. And so Factor takes care of all of that for me. Their meals are never frozen. They never use antibiotics in their meats or hormones, no GMO, lots of delicious, healthy ingredients that real chef make into delicious, delicious meals. And the best part is it's delivered right to your home. So it cuts out all of that time that you need in order to have healthy meals, whatever you want, whether you're plant-based or vegetarian or want to just eat better, they can cater to you. Right now I'm picked up a garlic tomato shrimp. I have never been disappointed in any of their meals there are simply delicious so i'm going to go pop this in the microwave you could also bake it if you want and i'll show you guys what the finished product looks like also you can do factor plus and add on little bites or juices i'm going to try this carrot orange ginger that looks absolutely amazing perfect pick me up for a long work day so let me show you what it looks like so i can eat my lunch really quickly and get to the rest of the day Okay, look how delicious this shrimp looks, you guys. It seriously smells amazing. Every time I come back to the workroom, everybody's like, what are you eating? It smells so delicious. I can't wait to dig in. Don't forget to check out Factor. I'm going to leave the link in bio. They gave me a code for $90 off your first three weeks. So check them out. You're going to love them. All right, so we have awesome PAs on the vascular surgery team. So all the notes are done, all the work is pretty much done. And now we are going to check in on our patients during PM rounds. And then I'm going to hold the consult pager. So if there's any consults that come in between now and the end of the day, then I will go see them. Vascular yeah, surgery is really complicated because you have to know your anatomy really well. There's obviously a lot of different um, veins and arteries in the body, and there's lots of different vascular surgery procedures. Some of the most common procedures in vascular vascular surgery are angiograms where you basically endovascularly, so minimally invasive, you access um, the artery at the groin site. Usually you go into the femoral artery um, at the groin site 
and you access, most of the time it's a contralateral access. So if you're trying to get to the left leg, you will access the right leg, cross over, get to the left leg. You will um, unclog um, clogged arteries by either stenting them or using a balloon to open them up. And that helps to allow flow to go down into the feet. Um, a lot of patients will have either claudication because of peripheral arterial disease where they can't walk very far without getting pain in their legs because they're not getting adequate perfusion um, to their legs um, or they have wounds on their feet or legs that won't heal because of poor perfusion either. Um, these are patients that either have peripheral arterial disease or have diabetes and diabetes um, is one of those diseases that also affects a lot of your um, arteries, especially the smaller arteries. And so the arteries that go into um, your uh, lower legs and your feet. And so this is very, very commonly done endovascularly. So through the arteries um, without having to do huge incisions. So it's a really wonderful way um, to treat people without having to um, go undergo major surgery. A lot of times this is done under sedation in the IR suites. There are also, of course, things that are done in the upper extremities and there are a ton of um, cardiac uh, intervention that you can do endovascularly as well that's done with the cardiac interventional um, uh, physicians or are done with cardiac surgeons or they're done with uh, interventional radiologists. So lots of different things that you could do. You could do things in the upper extremities as well. Um, and, uh, you know, depending on the type of uh, disease that you're trying to treat and what tools that you have, um, you can access different arteries to get there. And so it's really, really interesting and something that's very different, something that I probably will not get to do on oral surgery unless we end up um, you know, inventing something in the future. But uh, generally speaking, you have to have large enough arteries to be able to access endovascularly and get to other places in the body because very often you're accessing here, but you're going here. Um, and so you can't really do that with very small arteries and veins. The thing about vascular surgery is we have a big team at all times because the list, the patient burden could be huge and that is super variable and really, really unpredictable. So sometimes we have 20 patients on the list and sometimes we only have four. So it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, and it's super unpredictable. With trauma, um, things in the summer are a little bit more predictable because in the summer, the weather gets good, people go out more, there's a lot more um, accidents, there's a lot more um, assault, and you know that summers are really busy. Um, but with vascular surgery, there is no time in the year where things are busy. It's just busy all the time and it can be really, really unpredictable. A lot of vascular surgery patients tend to be very, very sick. These are not elective surgeries. These are a lot of patients who have chronic kidney disease or end-stage renal disease and need access site for dialysis or their patients who have had years and years and years of claudication. So, um, pain in their legs as they walk because of peripheral arterial disease. And so it's a lot of patients who really need these surgeries and they are really sick. And so they are very, very complex. They are really, really tricky to deal with. And you wanna make sure that you are staying on top of everything, all of their anticoagulation medications, all of their, um, you know, all of their diabetic medications. You have to make sure that you are going the, doing the correct renal dosing for all of their different medications and so it does get really overwhelming. You need a lot of people that are here ready to take care of these patients. Um, and so vascular surgery is really fun, but also really, really tricky. And you have to be very meticulous on this service. All done with vascular surgery for the day. Oh, this is a page that tells me that I'm no longer covering the pager, which is usually the best page you can get at the end of a day. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, and learned a little something about vascular surgery. I'm gonna go home, make some dinner, uh, walk my dog, and just try to relax a little bit for the evening. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, comment below, let me know if you have any other questions, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at 15blades for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time, bye.